Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the top four mistakes that I see new breastfeeding mamas make. If this is the first time that you're here, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kitty. I am a mama to three little people. I'm also a breastfeeding mama myself, a lactation consultant, registered nurse, a birth and postpartum doula, antenatal educator, hypnobirthing instructor, and so many other things. And on here, I like to talk about trying to conceive, pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, infant care, and a little bit about motherhood and how I approach that. So if you're interested in any one of those topics, make sure, make sure and hit that subscribe button somewhere around here and join me and the family for um, our journey on here. You can see I've got a paint on my hands. I was doing a little bit of DIY last night. Um, so excuse that. Here is not going to be the place where you were looking for glamorous content. There are no makeup tutorials. There are no well curated outfit choices. In fact, you're lucky if I've even washed my hair because this is very much where real life exists. However, I have been getting more and more questions uh, related to how can I really stack the odds in my favor in terms of preparing to breastfeed my baby? How can I have a better experience this time than I did last time? How can I avoid the sore nipples? How can I avoid um, my baby being on the breast nonstop? How can I make sure that they are getting enough milk? And the first thing that I would say is education is key here and preparing for that adventure be ahead of time before your baby arrives is really going to make all the difference. So if you were looking to find a really comprehensive, um, interactive class where you learn everything from how to latch your baby to how to really keep an eye out for some of the more common hurdles that you might face in your breastfeeding journey, make sure and join my next breastfeeding class. I will leave the link for that somewhere down below in the description box. But for now, let's get into those top four things that I see and would consider mistakes from breastfeeding mamas. Okay, so tip number one, or the mistake number one that I see, is mamas placing too much energy, too much focus, too much emphasis on the timing of feeds. So watching the clock, instead of watching their baby, looking for their baby's feeding cues, watching and observing for your baby, telling you that they need to be fed. And the big rule here is that breastfeeding works on a supply and demand system. So I like to come back to that idea of if you were going to make your Friday night uh, phone call to get your Chinese takeaway maybe, you have to make the phone call first before the food is prepared and arrived. So similarly when we're talking about the formation and the making of breast milk, your baby has to nurse at the breast or, or a breast pump has to create that suckling action in order for that message to be sent to your brain that says we need to make milk for our baby and we need to continue to make that milk. So in order for us to be making an abundant milk supply, we need to be nursing our babies really frequently. And if we are focused instead on a clock uh, or an arbitrary number that somebody has made up that says you need to feed your baby X amount of times per day, what we're doing is we're missing valuable opportunities to for that breast stimulation, to utilize our baby's energy to suckle, to bring our milk in and bring in that abundant milk supply. And so without that stimulation, our body gets a really clear message that says, oh, we're not getting stimulation at this time. We're going to drop our supply to make sure that we don't need, we don't make milk at this time. And so we want to be watching instead of the clock, focusing on our baby's feeding cues. Starting right from the, those early feeding cues, I very much say, if your baby's eyes are open in those first six weeks, offer them the breast. They will let you know if they're not interested. But utilizing your baby's energy to suckle at the breast will send that really clear message to your body that says we need to make milk for this baby. So first mistake I see new mamas making is watching the clock instead of watching their baby. Next thing that I see is these mamas who get really, or these parents who get really into swaddling their babies. And while swaddling can be very comforting, very reassuring for particularly babies who are maybe preemie babies, uh, babies who um, have a lot going on or their startle reflex is just like super, super um, accurate and very easily triggered, it can be helpful. However, we're talking about breastfeeding here. And if you were looking to maximize your milk supply to really nail your latch technique, we want to always unswaddle our babies when it comes to nursing time. 
if you're keeping your baby all snuggled up like this, what you're telling your baby is you are cozied up in the womb. You don't have to work to feed, to nurse. Whereas breastfeeding actually is quite a full body experience for a baby. They have to use their hands, they have to move their mouth, they maybe move their feet to kind of get to the breast. They, it is a full body experience for them. And so we want them to get that message that says you are out in the world, you have to nurse in order for you to get the nutrition that you need. So when it comes to the time to breastfeed your baby, make sure that you unswaddle them. So the next big mistake that I see breastfeeding mamas make is the introduction of a bottle too early. That is not to say that there isn't a place for combi or combination feeding where your baby gets both a bottle and breast or that your baby gets a mixture of formula and breast milk. There are ways to do that in ways that protect your milk supply. However, if you are giving a bottle willy-nilly here and there, maybe you're giving it in the morning one day and then you're giving it at four o'clock in the afternoon the following day. Maybe you haven't set a really clear message for your body on when it needs to produce milk. And what can happen when we give mixed messages like that is one of two things. Either the mixed message tells your brain, okay, sometimes we make milk, but sometimes we don't. And without a really clear message, our supply slowly dwindles down. Or if we're not doing that bottle feed in a really slow paced way that, simul that uh, is similar to how your baby would be receiving milk at the breast, our babies are clever and our babies can develop what we call a flow preference where our babies go, okay, well, I don't have to work that hard when I'm drinking from a bottle, but I have to work a whole lot harder at the breast. I'm just going to tell mama this is what I want. And so this is where our babies will become fussy at the breast. They're letting us know, actually, the bottle was a whole lot easier. I want that. So be really mindful if you plan on introducing a bottle to make sure you have nailed down your breastfeeding, um, so your milk supply, but also your breastfeeding approach. Make sure that your, your latch is really good. Make sure that you are happy with attaching your baby at the breast, so you're comfortable in different holds, different positions. And then, of course, talking to a lactation consultant to find out your, to help you find your groove can be really, really helpful. If you're interested in adding a bottle into your routine, I will leave a video linked somewhere down below that talks all about introduction of a bottle, when to do it, how to do it, and the benefits of a gentle, slow approach to giving a bottle to a breastfed baby in order that you can protect your supply and have your breastfeeding journey last as long as you And wish. the fourth thing that I see new mamas, new breastfeeding mamas make mistakes with is the introduction of a dummy or a soother too early, too soon, and often masking those early feeding cues that our baby's giving us. So similar to that first tip where we're talking about supply and demand, we want to utilize our baby's energy they have to suckle to remove milk from the breast, which sends that message to our bodies to make more milk. If we are masking our baby's early feeding cues by giving them a soother, a dummy, a suck, something to suck on, that sucking energy that they have isn't being utilized to send that really clear message to our body. So we're missing out on feeding cues. So really important to be aware of that for our supply. And the other thing that would be we have to be aware of there is where we are missing out on those feeding cues, we are also adding in a layer of your baby suckling on a dummy that can be very different than at the breast. So we may be encouraging some not reinforcing, some not so positive nursing habits. For instance, when we look at how our baby would typically suckle on like the average normal dummy that you would buy and uh, not naming any brands, babies don't tend to open their mouth very wide. They tend to have their mouth closed and pinched over the nipple or the teat of the dummy. That's not, that would not be comfortable at the breast. Similarly, our baby falling asleep with a dummy in the mouth is very far from the optimal resting posture of the baby's mouth and tongue for um, alignment and development uh, down the line for positive oral development. Our baby's tongues, when they are sleeping and resting, should have their mouth closed and the tongue should be resting on the roof of their mouth. So being aware of all of this can be really helpful. And at the very least, if you're already giving your baby a dummy, making sure that it is one that is a rounded shape and that as your baby comes away from suckling to sleep, that you then remove the dummy and make sure their mouth is closed with the tongue 
on the roof of their mouth. I will share down below a reel that I already made talking all about this topic and um, resting oral posture and the importance of that for small babies but also for life. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video with my top four mistakes that new breastfeeding mamas make. And if you're interested in becoming empowered with as much education uh, as, can, as you can have to set yourself up for breastfeeding success, make sure and sign up to my next breastfeeding um, event down below. And you can also access the recording if you don't make it um, for the live. So I hope to see you there. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.